I'm Linda Kidd and we're here at Susan Vogel's studio in the Santa Rosa Valley. We would love to find out how this studio came about. Yes, well the studio was built back in about 2001 and it came about because I told my husband we have to move. I was working doing home portraits at that time in a little tiny office and it was so small so I said I need a studio, I need a bigger space. So he said I don't want to move I'll take the orchard out and build you a studio. That's love. And this is my, <laughs> yeah, this is my studio. Well, let's see this. Okay. This is my office. And as I, I've been painting since I was six years old. Uh, so I've always loved to paint. My mother, I told my mother I didn't want the books with the lines in them anymore. I wanted just plain books so I could do my own lines and paint pictures myself. So I was really very creative even at the age of six. Oh, that's wonderful. So why don't you show us your studio here? This is my storage area, which is a little too small. So my, my husband's going to get me a nice tough uh, uh, shed uh -huh. so that I can store things. Uh -huh. It's interesting, after you finish completing oh. something, you think, oh, why didn't I do such and such? Exactly, yeah. exactly. I just have no room for frames and can extra canvases, and let alone the paints that I've already done. And then I have a full bathroom in here, because we thought at some point this may turn into somebody's granny flat, mm -hmm. and then they'll have a full bathroom with a tub and the sink. And yeah, good idea. Good investment. Yeah. Yeah. And um, and then I've, I've also got a refrigerator and a microwave. I keep all my paints in the freezer. Uh -huh. uh, a lot of artists do this because then I paint almost every day and then my paints remain fresh. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah. throwing out paint every day. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And then these are some of my paintings here that I've won awards for. Now, is this watercolor? Um, this one is watercolor. This was watercolor. This was in my arms. And yeah. is this gold leaf, Susan? Yes. Yes. Wow. I like to work with a little gold leaf. I really do. I just, I, I, I admire Gustav Klimt. Uh huh. You know, and mm -hmm. this is what he did. And I thought it was just very different. It mm -hmm. gives a different element to the watercolor. And, the and I like the geometric feeling with the, yeah. the curviness of the, or the organic shape of the yes, I lady have, and lady. I have always really done that. I mean, I always try and incorporate the abstract along with my figure. Mm -hmm. You see up at this top one here, I have the abstract again. And these are very old paintings. These are these were done back in the 80s. But you can see that they're they're done with a, an abstract quality to them. I love the reflective shadow light on the side of her face. Yeah. A lot of artists are afraid to do that. Uh, yes, afraid to put color yeah. in, in flesh well, things. I, I'm really a colorist. I love color, and I like it quite a high key color too, mm -hmm. uh, rather than a muddy, dark. Color. Yeah, you, you one of saturation. The, yes, one of the artists I, I like very much right now is Christian Hook, mm -hmm. and I love Christian Hook's work where he can do he 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 does a a, a, a deconstruct realism, mm -hmm. and what he does is he puts the he puts the abstract into the actual figures. And you can see that in this one, I have really added a lot of the abstract to my figures. The figures are realistic. But you get a lot of movement mm -hmm. with that uh, deconstruction of the background. Yes, too. yes, you do. And has this got gold leaf in it? This is, a, this is a combination. This is really, it's got some gold leaf and it has some, it has some uh, silver on the top. It's silver, and then I've got something that like sparkles down it. And this is in acrylic. Uh -huh. I started working in acrylic when the pandemic hit, and I've been having a little bit of fun with that. But I'm not normally uh, an acrylic painter because I really like to get the soft, you know, um, shadows and shapes in my in my figures. The soft edges. Yeah. You have trouble with that with acrylic. I, do. I haven't I, painted in acrylic. Yeah, I do. So this most of my paintings are in watercolor or oil. This is a watercolor, and there's the gold leaf in this one. And again, I I have a very abstract kind of background with this blocking. Mm -hmm. I, I, like, I do that in a lot of them. This one too. Uh, I did a whole series on pregnant women because my daughters. I had three daughters all pregnant at the same time. Oh my God. So 
Wow. I, I took photographs of them and turned them into paintings. So I have a whole series, a little series of, um, of uh, pregnant women. And is this, this is one of the um, results of that, of a pregnancy? Uh, uh, no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> this, this was an exercise I did when I finished getting my, my um, degree. I went back to school at uh -huh. 65 and got and finished off my degree in, in uh, art oh, good at for you. Channel Islands University. And when I was finished, I had done so much. The, do you know, the teacher there really wanted me to do very abstract work. Uh -huh. and I did several large abstract paintings. But uh, when I came back, when I was finished, I did this as an exercise in, in portraiture, just to get my So this is not a granddaughter? This is a granddaughter. Yeah, so she is a result of one of these. Right. <laughs> I asked her questions about her new baby brother. And so <laughs> I took photographs of her and she answered these questions, you know. That's great. And, uh, and so is, this is the piece that you... This is the one I won the... Um, you know, best, best, of show. best of show for. And this is called Sisters. And uh, what inspired me with this was I was in London and I saw this Muslim woman waiting for her limo to pick her up. And I was sitting next to her, <laughs> you know, in a pair of jeans and I've been shopping. And, and she had the most beautiful red patent leather shoes on under her, her black uh, robe. And she had a Harrods shopping bag with her and I thought I'll bet she's got 15 or 20 thousand dollars worth of clothing and jewelry under that you know? <laughs> yeah. and here I said the tank top and, uh, okay. but this was during the pandemic and you know I did the poppies for remembrance and you can see this this is a reflection these girl, women are sitting here and they've got a glass behind them and this is a reflection of the street that's actually in front of them I love that concept. Yeah, and you can see the ambulance going by, and the uh, and the bus, you and know, the London yeah, bus, mm -hmm. bus yeah. and taxi, and and then I put the elements on the top because they're English, the English flag, and then uh, uh, stained glass from one of the churches that are there, and then on the other side of this is actually a little mosque for uh -huh. Muslims. So it's kind of you know a worldwide. Uh, problem that we were having and, and of course this woman she works for National Health she's got the National Health badge on her and she's got blue jeans and you know it's Kenny's. a hot summer day red, red Kenny's she's, though yeah red <laughs> Kenny's to match the red shoe and she's got a Tesco uh, bag which is kind of an inexpensive shopping place in, in England so how do you start your paintings with sort of an idea you know this one over yeah, here. That, that's what made me ask yeah, that question. Uh, this is my grandson, and we were talking and fiddling around in the studio, and he picked up the birds that I had, and I put birds on his head and took pictures, <laughs> <laughs> and it just evolved from that, you know. So. And okay. what do you do here? This is my drawing area, and my drawing board. I do a lot of um, little thumbnail sketches before I start before I start a painting. You know, I take notes, I do thumbnail sketches, I do little drawings mm -hmm. of people. This was... Even with your colors blocked yeah. in. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I blocked my colors. This was going to be for my dance, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I, I always make these little thumbnail sketches. I, I need a direction that I'm going. And do you uh, work out your composition then at this point? Yeah, I work out the composition and some of the colors, but I don't necessarily stick with the colors. Here's the one of the little bird that I was doing, uh -huh. you know, and and this was the one that was for uh, Tango, Tango, you know. Yeah. But of course, so this is amazing. This this was called the Guardian, and I I won a second at the Art Guild show. And then I, I submitted it in, in, the, in the show, the Canango Valley Art Show, uh -huh. in first place. Oh, how fun. So, <laughs> you know, so it's, it's just a very sentimental piece, but it's got the gold leaf in it, and it's very typical of my work. No, it's and wonderful. Then, and then uh, this one, I was trying a new uh, method with this, because this is actually acrylic. Really? Yeah, this is all acrylic. With a palette knife? Uh, no, actually the paint was put on with like a paper towel and oh, splashed on it. And underneath this 
is several different colors so that the colors kind of come through. Huh. The only yeah, thing I is I, I should have done it on a, a much heavier board than this. Uh, so uh -huh. I'm, I'm going to try the process again, but with a heavier board. So you can scrape and... Yeah. 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 And, and then these are some of my, my daughters and me. And this is the one I just finished, which are my daughter and her, her girlfriend. And this again has the gold leaf in it but it's not ready yet. You know, I haven't signed it or varnished it. And you it. have a little bit of this deconstructed yes. area in here. Yes, I love that. I have. Abstract. Mm -hmm. and very painterly. And, yes, and I'm doing that in a lot of my work. It's got a, a more um, abstracted quality. And yet I'm trying to keep the figures very realistic. I like that. But, you know, like here, it's like uh, Soraya or Kamansky mm -hmm. where you haven't really painted the foot, but we, we fill it in. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't need to, to fill it. But no. the, the focus is here, this expression that these two people have. Yes. And the gesture. And the fun and the yeah. lovely hat. Yes. yes. And everything else is very abstracted and floral and, you know. I think that's fun. why your, your uh, paintings grow on people, because you've left room for them to put themselves in there. In yeah. Interpretation. Yeah. Thank you. I think that's. Fun. This is my palette, and I use a little. I use cadmium two shades of yellow, cadmium yellow, and yellow okra. I use burnt sienna and and uh, burnt umber. I have alizarin crimson on here. I have two reds with the alizarin crimson. I have a cadmium red, and then I have um, a diazinon purple. I have cerulean blue and ultramarine blue. I have verdean green and sac green. And then I have also Neil Boyle's, what Neil Boyle used to call his sissy colors. Uh, which are, <laughs> what's which, that? Which are pink and mauve and kind of a bright green and kind of a, a light blue. And, uh, and then I have black on my palette and I have white. I don't really use black except to touch things up like I might use black in a flesh color instead of the cerulean blue. Really? And I use black in when I do hair because hair is beautiful. Blonde hair is beautiful when you mix uh, uh, yellow okra, white, and a little bit of black. Huh. A beautiful blonde. So I, you know, that's that's important. And then my flesh colors, I mix them myself, and a light flesh is usually yellow okra, cadmium, uh, uh, yellow okra a little bit of cadmium red light, white, and a touch of either cerulean or a little bit of black. Huh. And that makes a light one. And then the dark one is quite often is um, sap green, a little bit of red, a little bit of white. Or sometimes I use um, purple, the diazin on purple with a little bit of white and a little bit of yellow ochre. And those two make really nice, darker shades in the palette. I like a lot of color. I'm really a colorist. Yeah. So, you know, my half tones have a lot of color in them. And uh, and I, I, I think nothing of taking maybe my, my sissy blue and putting it right on the, on the canvas along with the other colors of the flesh. I notice in your shadows on, on the fleshes, you're very liberal with color, which is yes. wonderful. It reminds me of Soroya or Sargent. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just going to pan a little bit here and show part of the studio that we really haven't been able to see. It's so beautiful. The ceilings are, I don't know, 20, 30 feet high. Yes, <laughs> Skylights. And... I have two fans because the fans keep the air circulating. You know, I like to work in oil and, you know, I don't want the fumes. Uh, when I work in watercolor, my watercolor board is usually on this large table and I put a... I get a um, large plywood that I've varnished and I tape my watercolor paper to the varnished plywood. And that way I can do these very large watercolors. So. Nice. Notice you have another area over here where your uh, the bed is. Yes. For your models. Yes, that used to be where I'd keep the models. You know, when I did the life, my the life drawing classes, I'd have modeling here and the models, I knew all of the models from people sketchers and they all knew me. So, you know, they, they were really happy to come out here to my studio. So. so what are your goals for your art this year? Well, I've got still a, a whole bunch of paintings that I have 
that I want to do. Um, and I, I'm, I'm hoping at some point to have a show. And I would like to sell some of my work. I think in the show, that's what I would do. I'd have everything for sale. Uh -huh. um, and, you know, I still like doing the portrait work. Portrait doesn't, doesn't do very well out here in the Fayetteville Valley. I mean, I, I'm sure if I lived in New York or Chicago or downtown LA, I'd probably have a really good, um, you know, portrait business. You need to do portraits of horses if you're going to be out here. Yes, yes exactly. <laughs> you can do people and and horse and their well, horses. You know, that's the thing. <laughs> out here, people will go and spend four or five thousand dollars for a photograph. Now, a photograph in 20, 30 years is falling apart. It's gone. Yes, right. And they won't they won't spend any anywhere near that amount for an oil painting. Right. But an oil painting is going to be here two, three hundred years from now. Yes. You know, right. it's something that their great, great grandchildren will be looking at. That's right. And you know, I, I, I look at my art and I know that abstract expressionism is the going thing right now because they look at it and to me it's all color and design. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, a hundred years from now, some of those abstract expressionist paintings are going to be tossed in the trash. People are going to look and say, what the hell is this? What are they doing? You know? yeah, right. <laughs> but I doubt that they're going to throw away any of my paintings because they're all saying something about the time we're living in and, and the people that were here and what they're wearing, what they're doing. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I think that mine will last for two, 300 years. They'll be looking at them saying, Oh, look, that's a Susan Vogel, <laughs> you know. So how can people contact you? Do you have a website? Yes, I have a website, sjvogelart at um, dot com is my web, you know. Your email address. Okay, yeah, email great. address and website, both are sjvogelart. Okay. So. Well, thank you so much for letting us see your studio. It's been a pleasure meeting you and look forward to seeing you at shows.